Hello, this is Mike Ryan with Right With God Ministries, and we welcome you. If this is your first time, sit back and just enjoy hearing the gospel of grace. It's going to change your life, I guarantee. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for get, getting these regular videos sent to your inbox. Uh, if this, these videos encourage you in any way, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps for other people to be able to see these messages and for their lives to be changed and to be encouraged. The title of today's video is three reasons you should stop repenting of your sins. Oh yeah, you heard me. Stop repenting of your sins. If you've ever had the uh, experience of listening to an open, an, an open air preaching, okay, you're gonna, you've probably heard some variation of repent of your sins okay if you've ever been to maybe you've been to churches where you've heard it preached repent of your sins turn from your sins turn for your sins let me be the first to tell you right now that nowhere in your bible you will ever read the phrase repent of your sins not in, not in the new covenant nowhere for your salvation will you ever read that now there may be bible versions that try to have a translation of thought for thought, not a literal translation, but a thought for thought translation. And they may try to inject that in there, which those, those translations are not study Bible translations. They are just more for people to kind of have an idea. The problem with it is, is that the writer is now putting their kind of thought into what their perception into what they think the literal translation is saying. You wanna stick with literal translation. So King James is a really good foundation for this. And if you have a King James, then you can branch out to other versions if you like, but the King James should always be your main source because that's a literal translation. But, not, and it, nevertheless, you will never ever see repenting of your sins, turning from your sins as a prerequisite for getting saved and for staying saved. I have to say both because there's a form of false Christianity that will tell you they believe you're saved by believing in Jesus, but then you need to keep doing something or behaving a certain way to remain saved. So in order to be saved or stay saved, you will never read, you have to repent of your sin. What does repent mean? Repent uh, comes from the Greek word metanoa, which means to change your mind. Also, there's a Latin derivative there, that word pent. Uh, this is where we get the word pence, pensive from. Uh, rather, pensive comes from that, that word pent. I think pence is like the root. Uh, you can go look on that. And then re, of course, to do again. So re repent is to rethink, all right? Change the way you think. And what the Bible does say is that you are to repent, to change. You're to change the way you think and believe the gospel in order to be saved. Okay. And this is where we get to the point in the video where I'm going to give you three reasons you need to stop repenting of your sins to God. Now, repenting of your sins to your fellow man, to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to somebody you hurt, that's different. That's relational with other people, okay? Because other people are not God and you've done something wrong, go ahead and confess it and let them know what you've done wrong and you can heal your relationship. Confess and be healed. Confess your sins and be healed. Okay, confess your sins to one another. If you've done something wrong, just confess it and keep it moving, all right? But when it comes to God though, you don't need and you should stop repenting your sins and confessing them like they're this big issue, no. Here's, number, here's the first reason why, okay? You believe in Jesus. Jesus put away all of your sin. Past, present, future. We can't, see, we can't just say, I gotta go to this again, just not just your past sin. Because if Jesus only, if his sacrifice on the cross was only good enough for your past sin, then his sacrifice is no different than a goat. Because goats and bulls in the Old Testament and lambs were only good to forgive people for their past sin, which is why year after year, they needed to come back and make another offering and repent again. So Jesus put away your sin. Hebrews 9 verse 26 says, for then must he have suffered once since the foundation of the world, 
because he died once but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself the sacrifice of himself is sufficient to put away past present and future sin in your life okay just in case you weren't hearing me on that let me give you another one in that same vein jesus permanently takes away your sin first john 3 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin he took away all of your sins past present and future are you in christ yes you are in christ and you'll never be able to be out of christ he'll never let you go and in christ there is no sin he's taking it away so when you go to god why do you keep talking about your sins he's not seeing you that way stop doing that <laughs> amen good news in him is no sin which leads me to the second reason you need to stop repenting of your sin because god's not counting your sin against you anymore yes from person to person, people will count your sin against you. You better believe people are gonna count your sin against you, all right? You keep acting like that, you're gonna get fired, right? <laughs> you keep behaving that way, you're gonna get divorced. People, to person to person, your sins can count against you. But to God in Christ, no. Second Corinthians 5, 19. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them. And he's committed unto us this word of reconciliation. Imputed, it means to give, it means to count. He's no longer counting people's trespasses, their mistakes, their failures, their sins, any missteps that you've made, they're not counting against you. So stop coming to God like you have things against you. Why do you do that? Because you're being taught from the pulpit and from all these YouTube channels, these religious channels, that you need to do that. But that's because they're not preaching the gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of grace. Paul says in Galatians 1, I didn't dream this up. I didn't, this didn't come to me because of my own just thoughts or intellect. This was delivered to me from Jesus Christ, this gospel of grace. And anyone who comes to you, even if it's an angel from heaven and they come preaching a different Jesus, they come preaching a different gospel that's not this gospel of grace, let them be cursed. So, number one reason for why you should stop, number one reason for why you should stop repenting of your sins to God is because Jesus made an end of sin. He put it away. He took it away. Number two, it's not being imputed against you anymore. And here's the third reason. Here's the third amazing reason that you should stop repenting of your sin. God doesn't even remember it anymore. Look, God is omniscient, he's all knowing, but don't you know, he won't even know your sin. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm gonna read a couple of verses, then we're gonna get to the money verse. Hebrews 10, 10, okay? And then 10, 14, and then 10, 17. That's what I'm reading from. But it says that we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's Hebrews 10.10. 10. We, you, you listening, you are sanctified. In other words, you are permanently holy through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This act of you being made holy is a once for all thing. It's not repetitive. It's not a sanctification process. It's not happening over time. It's an act that took place once for all. Now let's go to verse 14. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's you, the believer. Once for all, you have been perfected. Whew. Such a beautiful verse. Now let's go to the money verse here. And their sins and iniquities, God speaking here, will I remember no more. And author of Hebrews is quoting Jeremiah. He's quoting a, the covenant promise that God made in the Old Testament that he would do this through Jesus Christ. I'm going to make a new covenant. 
and I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop remembering people's sin. I'm no longer going to record it. I'm turning the tape off. Amazing. You see, it's one thing to make atonement for sin. See, in the Old Testament, they atoned for sin. They covered it with the blood of a with the blood of a goat, um, goat or bull or lamb. It was covered, but it still stunk. It's like taking, like cleaning up your room when you were a kid. You ate in your room. I, I wasn't allowed to eat in my room when I was a kid. Maybe you did, all right. But even if I did sneak something, because maybe I did sneak some things in my room. But if I did, and I tried to cover it up by just throwing it under my bed or in the closet, yes. If my mom or dad walked into the room, they would see that there's nothing visibly out there. But eventually, that food is going to start stinking. Your sins were covered, but it was still on you. So atonement is not enough. What Jesus did is he remitted your sin. That's that word remission. What it means is it makes it as though it was never there. When your debt is remitted, that means it's like you never had debt in the first place. So verse 17, it says, God's talking about this promise in Hebrews uh, 10, 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And verse 18 says, now where remission of these is, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Think about it. If sin is no longer being counted, if sin has been taken away, if it's if what Jesus did is like sin never existed in your life in the first place, past, present, and future, why in the world are you making offerings for it? Why are you like, God, I'm so sorry, forgive me, I'm never gonna do this again? Why are you talking that way? Here's what you should do instead. God, thank you. I, I know what I did was wrong, and you forgave me for this already. I cannot believe you've forgiven me for even this. Every time you sin, let that be an act of worship to God of you forgave me for this. Thank you. And you know what's going to happen? As you experience the love of God, his unconditional love for accepting you, even when you sin, you're going to start to change. Even those behaviors will start to mature. You're going to start to do that less because it's going to be love that's going to affect you. It is possible for you to do the right thing for the wrong reasons. You know, Paul talks about this. He says, I, I, I lament for my, my brothers and sisters in the faith because they are zealous for God, for good works, but without knowledge. You could be zealous and be trying to do a good thing the wrong way. You feel bad about doing the wrong thing. And you know what? That's because the spirit of God is in you. That's because you're maturing. That's a good thing that you feel bad. That's a good thing. But when you start trying to say, I'm going to make it up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, you know, look, God doesn't need you to do that. He already loves you and forgives you. You can ask God, help me, help me to change this in my life. Thank you, because I know you're going to give me the strength. Speak in faith. Speak faith. Thank you, because I know you're going to give me the strength. Thank you, because I know that you haven't made any possible temptation and trial for me that I won't be able to bear and overcome. Thank you that you're going to perfect that thing which concerns me now. Thank you, God, that even though I struggle with this right now, it's not who I am and I have the victory over it. That's how you've got to start talking to God. Stop repenting. You already repented when you believed Jesus Christ and he forgave your past, present, future sin. But these false prophets, these false teachers come and tell you, you got to repent of every one of your sins. Who has done that? Who has stopped sinning? You don't have to stop sinning to receive the one who forgave all sin. Doesn't make any sense. Hope you were encouraged and spread this, share this gospel of grace. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and drop a comment below. For more grace-based Bible teachings every week, please subscribe to our channel. Please visit us on Facebook and our website, writewithgodministries.life.